after I had the abortion at 21 weeks. But um, in hindsight, I know that I wasn't well informed um, in making that decision at the time. So when I came out of Mary Stopes um, um, clinic in Brixton, the first thing that went through my mind was, where's my baby? What's happened to the body of my baby? And I kept asking myself that question. And, you know, the nurses that escorted me down to the recovery room, um, because I was in so much pain and I was sobbing, um, she said to me, you silly girl, don't you know what you've done? And that even put a shockwave through my system yeah. and made me so depressed. Um, but I questioned months after months, nightmares and cold sweats. Where's, where, what happened to this baby's body? You were 19. It, yeah, I was 19 at the time, yeah. Um, um, you said that you, you didn't feel well informed. You'd yeah. gone from discovering you were pregnant at 12 weeks to having the abortion at 21 weeks. Yeah. And obviously, as part of the process, you do have to get the permission of two doctors yes. to perform the surgery. Yes. How could you oh, not have been informed through that well, process? How did the process work? And I'm not saying as yeah. in it's your fault at all. I'm just saying, you know, there is a process and, and you would sort of assume that it was a process through which somebody would be well, apprised my, of all the details. Well, in my ignorance at, at that age, um, mm. I remember just seeing one GP at King's College Hospital, a doctor, my partner at the time, and I went there. Mm. Um, and when I went into the room to discuss that I am pregnant, um, the first option I was given was abortion. And we stepped out of the room, we spoke for five minutes, went back in, and I was so afraid, so confused, I had no clue what to do. All the voices around me at the time were telling me I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it. Um, so I felt so much pressure. Um, I felt okay within myself to go in for the abortion, but when I left that clinic, that was the beginning of my nightmare. Mm -hmm. Caroline, how do you respond to that? Well, first of all, I'm very sorry that you've had this regret. But we know 95% of women don't regret abortion. No, but I mean, the point of sort of going through something where she now just looks back, obviously endlessly so long later, thinking, I, I, I wasn't properly informed. The system is supposed to be that people do get properly informed, that they do get full advice, and it didn't happen here. I can't obviously answer for that because I wasn't in the consultation with you. I'm sorry you feel you weren't properly involved. And Mary Stokes, you take it very seriously in informing our patients, but you also don't want to frighten patients. I think the important thing is that we offer counselling, we give people a lot of time to think about it. We, you are very welcome to come back to counselling now. It's an open-ended offer from Murray Stokes for all our clients. We have a 24-hour helpline for women to ring up. So I'm sad that you've had this experience. I'm completely healed in my process for many years of struggling and to come to terms with the abortion that I went through, um, facing the images one day just outside the Department of Health was like, whoa, mm. like, oh my goodness, this is what happened to my baby. Yeah. And um, that was that sudden realisation and another step towards the healing process. Um, yeah, so I just feel that why are women not informed? Why are we not properly informed? If I went in for an operation, I would get the full download of this operation that I'm to have. Why is it with abortion that it's so secret? Why don't you let us know what we are going for and what's going to happen to our babies? Why, why, why does it, why, it's not a matter of scaring people, it's a matter of informing people so that I can make a proper informed